Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna notice um, is, I need like a more contrasted color here. The first thing that we're gonna notice, that probably doesn't really help, um, is I have a sine squared theta plus a cosine squared theta. I could guarantee you that almost any time you see both of those together, they're trying to get you to turn it into one. Would I say that's a that's a a hard and fast every single time rule? No, I would not. But I would say that more likely than not, if I see a sine squared theta and a cosine squared theta together, it would be beneficial for me to simplify that to equal one. Okay? Could I do the separate things like some of you started to do? I could. And I will still get the same answer. It's just going to take me longer. Okay? So anyway, we're going to change that into 1. So this is 1. Now, most of you guys changed. I'm going to do it the way that some of you started to do it and then I'm gonna do it the easy way. So first I'll do it the easy way. The easy way is I would have noticed that I have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one and I would bring down cotangent squared theta. The reason why in this case I would not change cotangent squared theta is because I am familiar with my identities and I can already know that cotangent squared theta plus one equals cosecant. And I'm done with my problem. I'm gonna repeat that. Because the rule, remember the rule of thumb that I told you guys? The rule of thumb that I told you guys is to change everything into sines and cosines. So most of you changed your cotangent into cosine over sine, which I will do in a second, okay? Um, however, again, remember, we have to think two steps ahead. So if I'm changing my, my if, if I'm thinking two steps ahead, I'm looking at that one that I just wrote down and I'm looking at the cotangent squared theta and I'm realizing that that looks familiar. Now, if you're not familiar with your identities, I'm not saying you need to memorize them. I'm saying be familiar with them, okay? Then I can think two steps ahead and be like, I don't need to change that because if I leave it alone, I already can have the answer. Does that, I hope that makes sense. Okay. Mr. Bernard, yes. Would we still get credit if we turned cosecant into one over sine squared theta? Like if you change the answer from here into one over, like you put the final answer as one over sine? Yeah. After you got cosecant? Yeah. Why? Because you said that everything has to be in terms of sine and cosine. I said it's helpful when you're changing it. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly, it depends on the specific directions. Um, I think most of your problems will be verify identity, so it'll already t tell you what your answer is, and you just have to make it look like that, so the discrepancy won't won't be valid. Okay, so in the test, we're, we're, we're going to have the answer, we just have to prove it, right? Yeah. You'll have okay. you'll probably have one, at least one where I make you just change it though, but if I make you change it, I will tell you the specific directions, and so it'll it'll say something like um, uh, change it into a single trig function that is not a fraction, like something specific like that, so that there's no way to mess it up. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's say that you did the problem the other way, right? Like, let's say you did the one plus um, cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. Okay, like if you did it like this, what you need to realize is the only way that you can add 
a one plus a fraction is to get like denominators, right? So we're gonna change one into, not that any of you would ever do this now that I've taught you the other way, but you would change that into sine squared theta over sine squared theta. Wow. So off the bat, you should already be realizing that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 over sine squared theta. And 1 over sine squared theta equals cosecant theta. Cosecant squared theta, excuse me. So either way, Ms. Blanc, could yes. you do the longer part again? I I just looked at this. I'm like, what is happening? I I need another explanation, please. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry. I'm, listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to pass this test. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> Hold on. Let me start from from the scratchy scratch. Okay. So. We already changed this part, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta turned into one, right? And then the next thing that I did was I changed cotangent squared theta into cosine squared theta over sine squared theta, okay? Because that's most of you guys' instinct, right? So if this is your instinct, there's nothing wrong with that, but you got to know how to manipulate it. So because I have a whole number and a fraction, the only way that I can add a whole number and a fraction is to combine is to get like denominators right so instead of one i'm going to change one to be sine squared over sine squared because remember anything over itself equals one so i'm going to rewrite the other side cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. And now that I have like denominators, I can combine them. Plus cosine squared theta. So that means on the top, when I combine my numerators, I get one. Because sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. On the bottom, my denominator, I'm gonna leave it alone because that's what we do with denominators. So now I have one over sine squared theta, and that equals cosecant. Cosecant squared theta, which is what I got on the other side. Only thing, one more question. I'm so sorry. Um, and the uh, on the very top, where did you get the cosine over sine from? From the tangent, just just so I know. So here we had a cotangent squared theta. <laughs> So cotangent is the same thing as cosine over sine. So if I have a cotangent squared, I w it has to be cosine squared over sine squared. So, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, okay. Let me stop.